Hello everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Aaron and I will be solo tonight. So this is episode 102 and we are here with a special guest, Stefan Nason of the San Jose Sharks. Uh, thank you, Stefan, Sarah, or Stefan, for uh, joining for the show. It's going to be uh, a cool little interview episode we got going on. Appreciate your time. Yep. Uh, so just a little intro for you. Uh, Stefan was born and grew up playing hockey in Texas. He was drafted by Ottawa, 21st overall in the first round uh, in 2011. Uh, he quickly became a fan favorite in San Jose and uh, has a really cool goal song of Hakuta Matata, which I'm sure you get a lot of uh, flack for. Um, you were also selected for Team USA World Juniors, but I don't think you were able to play because you had a a uh, suspension that carried over, which, whatever, you didn't need it. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to add to your milestones, you are our first ever current rostered player to be on our show. So oh, thank well. you. So the San Jose Sharks team was away from San Jose for uh, pretty much over a month, right? It was like 35, 36 days. Yep. What kind of uh, mental and physical toll was that on you guys? Um, it was pretty difficult, honestly. Uh, I think it was more the uncertainty was really the, the driving factor. Um, we, we were getting updates on a daily basis, whether or not uh, we'd be coming back here or not. Uh, I, you know, for the first little bit, knowing that we were going to be in Arizona wasn't too bad. Uh, but then, like I said, when, when you start not understanding when, you know, you're going to be able to get your family back or see them again, that was kind of the the most difficult part. And then, you know, as, as you guys and everyone's been paying attention to, uh, the minute that we found out we could get home, we, we came home immediately. Um, so that was that was definitely the most difficult part of it. I'm sure that felt great too. Yeah. Uh, who was your roommate on this trip, and who was it last year? Is it the same person? Uh, we, we don't have roommates, so um, if you're off your entry level uh, contract, you don't ever have a roommate. But this year, I think it's special occasions uh, for everybody involved, so you're not around uh, anybody else outside of the rink. So it's uh, I don't think there's any roommates this year at all. Did you have one last year? I uh, no. No, no, oh, because you kind of bounce up and down. Got it. Yeah. No, no, I haven't been on my entry level contract in oh man, like eight years almost. <laughs> <laughs> Just entry level all the time. Huh? It's been a while. Yeah. Um. All right. Back in San Jose, what is going to be your first non-hotel dinner after returning? I guess you're getting food right now, right? Yeah, we've we've been here for a couple of days now. Um, I don't even know what we ordered first. Uh. <laughs> I mean, we've, it's kind of been a blur of, of the past three or four days here. Um, maybe Mendocino Farms is one of it uh, over here in San Tenero. That's really that, good. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I think we ordered there probably twice now. Is that your go-to meal, kind of? Uh, no, I don't have a go-to meal. No? I'd, I'd much rather cook, but we can't really go to the grocery stores either. So waiting three days for uh, your steak to get delivered is not exactly the ideal. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> There's some fans will be happy to deliver some stuff on your doorstep. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so what is your game day routine? Has it changed because of COVID compared to before COVID, I guess it is? Uh, no. Um, I mean, on the road, is obviously different than being home, but um, game day routine stuff is pretty uh, – it's pretty simple. Um, you mean you go from going to the rink, having breakfast to having to, you know, skate, maybe do pregame skate or just get some sort of sweat in. And then, uh, you know, you go to, usually you go to a restaurant like Maggiano's or you go to Aldo's or I don't know, wherever else some guys go. And, uh, but instead of doing that, I think they may have some meals for us at the rink, which is good. And then the rest of the time I just kind of stay at home. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty easy. Nice. Does that mean you're getting to the rink earlier because you're going to be eating there? Uh, no. I mean, we, we eat at like noon. Somewhere oh, right. Around then. We have like a snack before we go to the rink around four. So you go home and take a nap, a little pregame nap? Are you uh, one of those guys? Sometimes. I, yeah. I don't really know how much I'm going to be sleeping with my daughter here, but we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that, yeah. 
Uh, was it difficult to bond as a team because of COVID, the way that they have you guys separated with everything? It's a little different kind of a road trip than normal, right? Yeah, um, I think it's just it's all about being smart, um, you know, making sure that you, uh, you know, just take care of yourself, keep yourself uh, sanitized, and you know, maybe not touch things or be around uh, guys as much as you kind of wish. Uh, um, so I, I guess in that regard, it makes it a little difficult, but you, you find ways to, to interact with everybody. And, um, you know, and like I said, as long as you're kind of keeping your distance from, from guys and, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of okay to, to have a conversation with them. At least I believe so. But yeah. I don't make the rules. <laughs> uh, let's talk about your coach, Bob Bugner. Um, was there a difference in Bob from when he took over kind of like when you first came on the team? Versus now, since he's kind of established and been here and was able to do a training camp with everybody. Um, yes and no. I mean, Boogie's Boogie's Boogie. I've known him um, for since I was 16. Uh, he was coaching in Windsor um, in the OHL, so I, I've known him for for a long time. I, I think his his style is kind of the exact same as uh, what it was last year. Um, I think just we have a little bit more structure to our game, um, but. I'd say overall, I mean, he's still the same guy. He is, uh, you know, I, I like him as a coach, uh, you know, no, no matter no matter whether I'm playing or whether I'm not right now. Um, you know, he's a good coach, and, uh, you know, I, I think guys guys seem to gravitate towards him, which is good. Was he part of the reason you were able to get claimed by San Jose and come here? Did he have a role in that at all? I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know the answer to that question, but he was definitely one of the reasons why I came back. Nice. Yeah, you did sign back here, which is fantastic. Yep. Um, uh, another question about the taxi squad system. Do you see an advantage of having a taxi squad system versus just the – normally it's about three scratches a night. It's kind of like a way you can do more scratches, I guess you can, in a way. You think there's an advantage? Like you, you get to heal up some bumps and bruises because the schedule's so compact this year compared to a normal one? Yeah, but that's uh, – that's a hard question to answer because, uh, you know, most of the guys that are going to be on the taxi squad are guys that would typically play, uh, you know, or would want to play in the minors, right? And so that's kind of it, – it's, it's a very tricky question to answer because, um, you know, the guys that are in the lineup right now and the guys that we have on our quote-unquote 13-man, 23-man roster, uh, you know, those are the guys that are going to probably be playing the games for the most part. Um, you know, there's obviously injuries and whatnot. It's nice to have them, uh, have, have access to them right away. Um, but I don't know if it's, uh, an added benefit or it's, if it doesn't make a difference. Uh, I don't, I don't really know. Um, I would say probably if anything, it helps us, but, uh, I don't think there's a solidified answer to that. Cool. Uh, another question about your playing with Patrick Marlowe. Is it weird to be playing with a living legend like Patrick Marlowe yes. and like Jumbo last year? Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. I uh, I had a very interesting uh, text conversation with him the other day, and I didn't really mean to text him, but I'm not going to tell you guys what it was, yeah, but it was very funny. weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. very awkward, and I, I felt like I had to apologize to him for even sending him a message. <laughs> One of those. I think we've all had one of those before. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it really wasn't even that bad. It was just very – and put me in a weird spot because I didn't mean to text him. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of weird because you were four years old when he was drafted in the NHL. Yep. <laughs> just yeah, for some it's... context for you. Well, yeah. he was, he's older than some of the most guys. And, like He's been playing longer than some of these guys have even been born, which is, yeah. just a cra- which is even crazier. Yeah, especially, I mean, the kids that are getting drafted now are born after 2000, right. which is mind-boggling to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it just means we're getting old. That's all it means. Yeah, it is. Um, all right, let's move on to the important stuff here. Um, your daughter is just over two months old, three months old now, right? Yep. Um, is dad life more or less difficult than you imagined? Um. Oh man, it's <laughs> it's crazy because in the in the beginning, it's just getting used to it. It's getting the understanding of kind of what life is going to be. Um, you know, the one thing I realize, and I have to, I kind of have to make sure my wife understands, is that like each day is different. Like you can't just plan what's going to happen because it just 
doesn't ever work in your favor. So if you have a set goal and a set, you know, mindset going into it that, you know, she's just like, like my wife is very structured and very and likes things a certain way. And with, I keep trying to tell her like the baby is not going to like listen to what you want. Like she's going to do whatever she wants to do at least for now until we're, you know, she's able to talk and speak and we can kind of, I don't want to say train her, but like kind of guide her in the right direction. Uh, so it's taken, it's taken her a little bit of time to adjust to that. And I think she's starting to understand it a little bit, but, uh, I would say that's probably the most difficult part is just, you know, you really want to be able to help them and understand them and they can't let you know whatever they need. So that's just the most difficult part. Yeah, I know what you mean. I got two kids and I got a third one on the way in another two weeks right oh, now. Oh boy. Nice. Right back into it. Yeah. It's, oh, it's going to be crazy in my house. All right. <laughs> Three months old, though, I think that's probably one of my one of my favorite ages because that's kind of when the baby starts to interact more with the dad than just the mom. Right. Uh, I mean, in the the first three months, I feel like I'm just there to support my wife, and I'm not really doing anything else. Right. Uh, yeah. My uh, my wife couldn't breastfeed, so uh, I, I was actually able to to help feed her and take care of her, which was kind of nice. It added some uh, really some stress from her, which was good, but. I even like FaceTiming right now. It's like I FaceTime her two, three times a day and she's actually like looking at the phone. Here's my voice kind of recognizes like my face. Well, so I think, Yeah. but, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's, it's very, obviously we haven't seen her each other in a couple of months. So it's, or in about a month. So it's pretty, it's pretty difficult, but, um, you know, hopefully get a chance to see them here soon. Yeah. So you're quarantining right now since you guys got back. Uh, yeah, we're, I mean, we're, I wouldn't really call it quarantining. I mean, I just, we're just kind of going to the rink every day and coming home. And uh, I don't think we had any guidelines to make us quarantine here, which was good. I think they were able to waive that. Yeah. Um, just so we can go to the rink and practice and, and whatnot. So, um, yeah, we're just kind of hanging out, really not doing much. <laughs> nice. That sounds like a fun yeah. time. Huh? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. All right. We're going to play a little game here. It's called the Dad Life Game. Oh boy! And can you uh, three things? You're gonna go out to dinner in six seconds. Can you name three things you need to bring when you're going out to dinner with the whole family? Uh, diaper bag, diapers, and a baby wipes. What about the baby? You need that too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But she's part of the family. Right. Oh, that's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah, you got me on that one. There you go. <laughs> All right. How about uh, lullabies? Can you name three lullabies or sing them? I haven't sang them yet, so I, no, I don't nothing? know. Nope. I don't know if I – I don't think I did much singing. Maybe some Raffi songs, but uh, I would just sing – I'm a big ACDC fan. I would just sing lyrics to ACDC, some Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, and yep. they didn't know the difference. It worked. No, it was, no, it was yeah, great. Right. It's fantastic. Baby got back. That's all you need. Yep, and they'll like it, and they'll grow up with it. Yep. <laughs> uh, all right, name three teammates that you would trust for watching Layton for 24 hours. Ooh. Ooh. 24 hours. Not Timo. <laughs> Is he standing right there? I can hear you. No, he just he just wants to get the food. Um ooh, all right, let me think. Uh I'd say Cooch. Cooch would be one of them. Uh wow. mainly because mainly because Brielle. Not because yeah. of not because of Logan himself. <laughs> um oh, what? Tommy, obviously, because he's a he's a dad now, so that's easy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, oh man, third one, third one. I could probably let. Uh, oh, I think the obvious choice is Patty here. Patty's got four of them oh. by himself, so yeah, he's easy. an expert. Although he's no yeah. expert on girls, he's got four boys, right? True, but Christina's there, so we're, we're, yeah. we're good. Uh, yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, we're we're good. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's going to wrap up our show. So thank you for joining us and be sure to tell your coworkers about us, right? Yeah, I will. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for your time and uh, we will see you later. All right. Take care. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at the fin factor and on Instagram at fin factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.